Hello everyone and welcome back on my YouTube channel. I am Thomas Etchel and today I want to explain to you Google's newest bidding update. They said it's the biggest in over 10 years. It's called Smart Bidding Exploration. I'm going to teach you when you should use it and when you should avoid using it. So let's dive in this new video. What is Smart Bidding Exploration exactly? So Smart Bidding Exploration is a new beta that allows Google's bidding algorithm to lose strict efficiency targets, let's say lose your target ROAS, to test new searches, new search queries that may convert, but fall a bit outside of the current bidding constraints that target ROAS has. You will find this new setting in your Pmax or search campaign under budget and bidding. So it does not really change your keyword targeting or campaign settings, but instead it relaxes your ROAS threshold, your ROAS target slightly in order to explore more diverse traffic and conversion opportunities. Always with the goal, obviously, of getting more additional volume and long-term value. When we look at it here, you can see that you will find this new beta under budget and bidding, and you have to tick the allow smart bidding to explore new traffic on this campaign box. And then you have a ROAS target tolerance. And here you can put on the slider from 10 to 30% how much of a new ROAS target tolerance you allow the system to bid on new queries. So for example, if I have a campaign with a target ROAS of 200 and a tolerance of 15%, then my new effective target ROAS of this campaign is only 170% because you have to calculate target ROAS 200 for 15% and then you got the new effective target ROAS as you can see in this example also. So that means this 15% of your target ROAS tolerance are trading in now some profitability with new search explorations, new searches that the previous target goal would not have captured because probably the conversion chance was not that high for the system to detect it. But with the smart exploration, it can now capture also these new searches. And as Google said in the GML 2025, 15% of all searches every day are new searches. That's why smart bidding exploration comes in quite handy in order to get new searches covered with your Google Ads account. So basically, if we put this together, what is smart bidding exploration? It's getting your high converting searches together with new discovery searches, like a low funnel with a lower to mid funnel targeting. I call it like that. When to start using smart bidding explorations? I don't recommend everyone to use it. There are like quite some heavy, let's say thresholds in order to go with it because it can also, let's say backfire. So when to start using smart bidding exploration? First, you have sufficient conversion volume. Smart bidding exploration obviously heavily relies on conversion and machine learning. So before adopting smart bidding exploration, your campaign should have obviously a solid history of conversions. Ideally, Google says more or less at least 30 conversions per month, for example, target CPA biddings and 50 plus for target ROAS. If you use it for performance max campaign, then 20 to 30 conversions monthly should be enough for you in order to go with it. Low conversion volumes means poor predictive accuracy for the system. So that's why I would not use it if you have low conversions. Second part, conversion tracking is accurate and stable. Your Google Ads account should obviously have a bulletproof tracking because smart bidding in general depends on clean, reliable data, right? So that means a proper tagging and no duplicate conversions. You should already set your primary and secondary conversions perfectly in your Google Ads account because inaccurate or unstable tracking confuses the algorithm and leads to wasted spend. Campaigns are quite mature and well optimized. You should not use smart bidding exploration immediately after launching a new campaign. And once the performance data accumulate more or less and understands your CPA or ROAS benchmark, then you can start transitioning to smart bidding exploration. Fourth, when you have a mature account, but that your performance stagnated, let's say you have a well-organized Google Ads account with quite some Pmax and search campaigns that have been running for a year and you see the ROAS, you always hit with 300%, 500%. It's quite stable, but your search term report more or less looks always the same month by month. Your target ROAS bidding system only goes on new searches where it's bulletproof that it will get you some revenue out. But even if you increase the budget, let's say for 10, 15%, your performance 
quite stays the same, meaning that your growth has stagnated and you don't get incremental conversions. So in this case, smart bidding exploration would be a nice way to find new intent patterns or new searches that your current bid strategy ignores because it just does not want to risk anything new because it wants to keep the nice stable ROAS in order for you to spend the same amount every month. So in this case, it makes sense if you say, okay, I'm gonna put my target ROAS tolerance a bit below in order to make my algorithm find new ways in order to get conversions and increment my conversions and get more growth out of it. Fifth, you're willing to trade some efficiency for volume. So I think smart bidding exploration is leaning a bit towards maximized conversion value than to a heavy target ROAS, obviously, because it tries to get more searches out of it, tries to find new ways in order to grow, but you will always lose a bit of efficiency. If your margin allows it, I think then it's a good way to, in order to go out and find some new searches and use smart bidding exploration. But only if your margin allows it, I think then it's quite cool that you try out smart exploration because it's not really capped on your ROAS. Sixth, you have a budget flexibility and let's say I call it a scaling mindset. Smart exploration typically works when you're not budget capped. So you must be prepared to increase spend if the algorithm finds more or less worthwhile new conversion opportunities. And if you're operating on tight daily budget, smart exploration might have only a very limited impact or even inefficiency. So only do it have a flexibility in budget and you're able to increase your budget while using it for 10 to 30% as a test. And the last one, you obviously should trust the algorithm. You should not use smart exploration without trusting the algorithm because then it's better you don't even test it. And you should have a nice monitoring in place. So you have to really know also that smart exploration is not a fire and forget thing. So it really requires your oversight and monitoring when you should not use smart bidding exploration. First of all, low conversion volume. If your campaign have as I said before, fewer than, let's say, 15 to 30 conversions per month, you never tried smart bidding, your ad spend is really low, your account is really young, then the algorithm might not have the base to learn from. In that case, you should go with normal target or even maximize conversion value or even manual CPC until the volume improves. Second, the campaigns are budget limited. If your campaigns are losing impression share due to budget, your first step should be to resolve this limitation and not enable smart exploration because that won't help. So exploration requires room to grow as we saw and budget constraints campaigns limited by budget, but really checking the losing impression share due to budget column will unveil if your campaigns are budget limited or not and are eligible to go for smart bidding exploration. Your Google Ads account has very strict efficiency requirements. For example, if you cannot really afford any increases in CPA or decreases in ROAS, then smart bidding exploration should not be touched because it might conflict very likely with your business objectives because smart bidding exploration always trades in some efficiency for reach. So if you cannot afford a trade, don't go with smart bidding exploration and keep the settings as they are. I have to be honest with you here. <laughs> if your Google Ads account does not have any conversion actions with value behind, then obviously it doesn't make sense for you to go with value-based bidding strategies like target ROAS, maximize conversion value, target CPA, or even here, smart bidding exploration. So in that case, for lead generation, for example, use target CPA or maximize conversion instead. If multiple conversion types are counted together without value differences, your CTA button to a form submission has a value of 10, but also the successful sending the lead form has a value of 10, then smart bidding may optimize the wrong action because you don't really give the same value to different conversion actions that really make a difference for your business because one is just clicking on a button and the other one is really sending the submission form. Campaigns are underperforming. If a campaign is still young or struggling to meet your target ROAS that you've set before, so performance is not really good, then smart bidding exploration will not help you to fix that problem. So you first have to get the fundamentals right. You have to make this campaign running, make it perform, make it to reach your target roles that you set in the beginning. And then you or also check keywords, ads, landing pages, tracking before going to smart bidding exploration. So first, obviously the campaign needs to be perfect and performing before using smart bidding exploration. Six, 
Pmax campaigns with a very low budget and low budget for me is 40 euros a day, 30 euros a day. Then I would not go with smart bidding exploration just because performance max rely a lot of conversion data and signals. So if your campaign is really small, has a small daily budget, I would not go with smart bidding exploration because as I said before, you trade in efficiency for value. So if the campaign is already very small, then it doesn't make sense that you go with this new feature, but you should try to scale it to the target that you set in the beginning or even have it at maximized conversion value if you want, but never enable smart bidding exploration on PMAX campaigns that are very small and don't have strong signals. All right, since I also talked a lot about smart bidding strategies, I want to give my opinion on how to choose the right smart strategy. So first of all, target CPA, I think that's obviously best for lead gen or fixed value actions when you have a consistent conversion data and need cost control, how much you pay per lead. So I think target CPA is the best option. Target was obviously it's the e-com bidding strategy type or any campaign that you have a different variation of conversion values. You can also use it for lead gen, obviously, if you have conversion action values. Target ROAS should only be if you track perfectly and you have enough volume. Maximize conversions. Yeah, that's when you want a lot of volume, but you tolerate fluctuation in CPA, like a smart bidding exploration plus. And it's great for early campaign phases when your campaign for lead gen is for example in early stages. And the last one, maximize conversion value. That's similar to max conversions, obviously, but optimized for total revenue. And it's perfect for retail campaigns when you don't have a fixed target ROAS and you want to kickstart your e-com campaign, for example, shopping Pmax. So my final thoughts to the new beta smart bidding explorations are, it can be a very nice way in order to break through performance get new searchers that have never been searched before in Google. I think also smart bidding exploration has been made because AI overviews in Google will also start showing ad there. And in AI overviews, people are searching completely different as in search. So that's why it opens up for more traffic, for more space in order for your Google ads campaigns to also show in AI overview queries. But obviously with smart bidding exploration, you trade in efficiency for traffic. And as I said, avoid it when the budget is constrained, when you don't track perfectly or your business model really needs strict efficiency. If not, you will run out of money or cash. So I think it's a very advanced feature that only Google Ads specialists should use if they really know what they're doing. It can also obviously backfire quite quickly. If you put, for example, a tolerance that's too high, let's say 30% on a target row, so that's already really low at 200%, for example, then it can probably backfire and you won't get that profitability out that you want. But it can also be very cool in order to source new searches, see what your target audience is searching at Google. So have to be aware of that. So yeah, I hope you like this video. If you do, then please leave a thumbs up and see you next Thursday. Bye bye.